What's up, guys? Mindless again. Wanted to take a quick sec and show you another piece out of the collection. Um, you might have seen this one last week. This was a piece I scored while at the USN gathering about three weeks ago out in Vegas. So um, this was an open bid Todd Rexford piece that I uh, knew I was going to attempt at uh, taking down while there. Um, depending upon how crazy the prices go because it's it's pretty amazing what happens when Two or three people really want a piece from Rexford the price goes way way past What could be considered reasonable, but I actually um, Was able to get this Relatively affordably I mean forgive me for saying that but for what I've seen open bid pieces for Todd go from Todd go for this is Kind of in my mind a no-brainer for me. Um, what we're looking at is the entropy model and um, To me, this is just absolutely beautiful uh, Many of you know, I have you know singularity And to be to just be honest with you guys this model Design speaks to me more it's just sleeker more aggressive looking more tactical looking um, to me at least and and it's uh, something I would carry uh, just because it's got that kind of dark finish and um, you know in time dealing with Todd I, I know that he uh, takes care of his customers very well so uh, he encourages everybody to carry the pieces and uh, if you ever need work or to get a spa that's never an issue so let's take a look at the knife before I tell you a little bit about it and how I scored it um, again this is the entropy model and um, pretty amazing stuff. If you look closely, uh, it's got a, a quarter inch custom pivot that's multi layered. If you look at it closely, it's just an absolutely beautiful exercise in engineering. Both sides stunning. And he describes it as a quarter inch pivot uh, machined with a see through bore. You can kind of see that behind it is uh, an anodized ring. You can kind of see it there, it's like a bluish color both sides then it's got a timascus inlay on both sides and it, that carries on to the lock bar as well so something you don't see too often with a timascus clip the clip is on uh, standoffs that are uh, grooved and then anodized within the grooves titanium backspacer with relief cuts beautifully executed it's a lanyard hole and it's a flipper and this model guys just think flips so hard Let's see if we can get it in focus for you. There you go. There you go. That's the entry model. There you can see uh, Rexford's Maker's Mark. Beautiful hand rub satin. And then you can see his uh, another Maker's Mark right there. And if you look closely, it matches the pivot. So I, th I found that just gorgeous. Lockup is perfect, as you'd expect. Early and solid. Let's see if we can get some light from behind. There you go, you can see it right there. Just perfection, honestly. Another example of perfection from uh, Todd. So, a um, little bit of story about this particular knife, this exact piece right here. This piece was to be completed and sold as an open bid at Blade Show, which was back in June or July. And if you follow... Uh, Todd Rexford on his social media, you would have seen that this piece, this particular knife, gave him a lot of issues. He had a problem with the lock bar, so he was unable to uh, have it ready to go um, for Blade Show. And instead of this piece, he brought the prototype Entropy, which um, went for the open auction. My buddy, actually, a friend, I'm a good friend of mine from, uh, believe it or not, very lives very close to me, actually picked it up, so I was able to handle it. Uh, many of you would remember it's the piece that had the wickedly strong detent. Um, so strong that most people actually could not flip it. Uh, my buddy, after getting it, spoke with Todd and Todd said, you know, let me take it home. I'll fix the detent and send it back to you. And he did that very quickly. And when he returned with the piece, I was able to handle the Entropy prototype, play with it. And I got a feel for the knife and I really, really liked it. I mean, to the point where I'll be willing to trade other Rex for pieces I had. To get into this piece now flash forward to the gathering and um, 
prior to heading out to Vegas, uh, Todd Rexford posted on his USN forum uh, the pieces that he was bringing, and lo and behold, this was one of them. And there was another entropy as well that had three inlays, three Timascus inlays on both sides. And honestly, I would have been with fine with either. I wanted just an entropy model. So arrive in Vegas. This piece was the open bid for Friday, the first day of the gathering. And I thought, you know what, I'm going for it. Let's, let's put a bid in. So I started and um, a, a good buddy of mine out of New York, Todd, uh, not Rexford, but another guy, Todd, was bidding on it, and I, you know, spoke with him, and I said, you know, if you're if you really want to take this down, I will try to take the uh, the other entropy model along with the triple uh, Timascus inlays, and you know, by the end of the day, around four o'clock, Todd uh, got it, and congratulated him. I was stoked for him. I mean, this is just truly an amazing piece, and basically thought it was all done. Now, about half an hour later, Sako over at Recon One cruises up to me and says, hey, Mark, um, that entropy that Todd won may be available. Are you interested? And obviously I said, yeah, I'm interested for the right price. If he's trying to flip it and make, you know, double his money or make 50% profit, I'd rather just hold off and bid on the, the other entry piece that was going to be up for auction on Saturday. And that was not the case at all. Basically, Sako said that if we you know, if I just paid Todd what he has into it, I could have the piece. And I was faced with that decision of do I do I take this piece or do I bid on the net the following day on the other piece, which is a little bit more ornate, and risk not getting it because the price goes, you know, crazy. So I decided, you know what, this is a for sure thing. I've handled this piece. I know Todd's put, you know, probably a hundred hours into it, well more than what he should have because of the problems that it, it you know, gave him um, during Blade Show prep. And we made the deal. I paid uh, Todd and we were done, you know, and it was a five minute transaction and I'm holding, I was holding this model and I was just stoked. Guys, this thing is so sick. Honestly, I don't really, I have a lot of knives, you guys know those who follow me on Instagram and you know, have been watching these videos for a while, you know I have uh, a pretty sizable collection, but honest to God, this thing is freaking sweet. The action is unbelievable. Honestly, it flips so hard. It's got a strong detent. I asked uh, Rexford about it. I said, you know, man, these, these detents are tough. And he was like, you know what? I expect people to flip these knives hundreds, if not thousands of times. And the reality is as the detent breaks in and settles in, I don't want them coming back to me complaining that it's too soft or the blade flips out you know, with a, with a kick. So I'd rather go with a little bit stronger detent and have it break into the perfection point after a few hundred flips. And to be honest, I like it this strong. Uh, you know, I think I've handled enough knives to know what I like and what I don't like. And I like strong detents and this does not disappoint. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, if you take a close up look at it, pay attention to the hand rub on this thing. It is, let's see if we can get some light on it. There you go. It's absolutely perfectly straight. There are no hooks. Check out how he milled the blade to match the frame, top and bottom with that swedge. It's perfect. Even. I mean, honestly, even his maker's mark has no ghosting or double layers. It's like it's clear and bright and perfect on both sides. Take a look at the, the hand rub here. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus. There you go. Just absolutely perfect. And truly on this piece, it's all about the pivot. If you look at this, it's like... I don't really even understand how he made it. If you look closely, you can tell the pivot is floating above like a titanium disc that's been blued. But then there's these like three little pieces that are coming out from the side and I just don't know how he did it. According to, to Rexford, this, the pivot, this diameter goes all the way through the blade. So it's a very robust pivot. And then this side uh, is the por portion of the pivot where you screw and tighten it down. And obviously you need like a custom uh, tool to do so. And that kind of sucks, but for aesthetically, this is just absolutely stunning.
absolutely stunning. When you take a look at the Timascus inlay, if you move down the handle, and in typical Rexford fashion, it is absolutely perfect. Literally no feeling in the transition, other than this orange peel is kind of like a little bit rougher texture compared to this polished Timascus, but it's just perfect. If you look at the top, how it rolls over, perfection, you don't feel a thing. And then what I found interesting is on the lock side, he did the same thing, where normally a lot of people will leave the lock side kind of sterile. He did that, or they would stop the inlay right there and nothing would go on the lock bar. He went above and beyond and continued it onto the lock bar. So in the closed position, you get that perfect symmetrical view. And it, guys, it is absolutely perfect. There's nothing I can pick apart on this piece. If you take a look at the backspacer, it's kind of like a gear pattern, but it's been relief cut kind of coming in from the side. So it gives it a different look. It's like polished and then brushed in between and it looks just absolutely stunning. And then the clip, perfection, honestly. The standoffs too, I mean, this Rexford does not cut any corners. Take a look at the milling on the standoffs. And then he's even blued the milled part of those standoffs. So it's just, it's just perfect. Absolutely perfect knife. And the size, it's, it's small. It's a small knife. It's, it's perfect. It's, you know, just over eight inches, ridiculously sharp. And once again, Todd Rexford just knocks it out of the park. And it's important to know on the open bid pieces, um, you know, the pieces he was doing his lottery knives, they, they were stunning. And one of them was a uh, hot hammered with a San Mai blade. And, you know, he sells those for like 1500 bucks or 1200 bucks right in that range. But on the open bid pieces, knowing that people are going to bid a lot more than that, he kind of pulls out all the stops and does things that he does not do on the, the lottery pieces. Um, and the best example here is that pivot. You, you're not going to see that type of pivot on uh, a lottery piece. So you know, it was always a goal of mine to pick up uh, an open bid Rexford just because of the engineering that goes into it. It's just perfection, guys. I wanted to share this with you today. It's a very rare piece. You're just not going to see too many entropies floating around. You know, you, you, he brought a gamma. Brought a couple singularities and then these two entropies, and aside from the the two that were at the gathering and the one prototype at Blade, I've never seen another entropy. And um, you know, once Rexford was uh, knew that I would be bidding on it, he was kind enough to remove it from uh, the case. They were you know displayed on his table in like a glass case, so you, nobody could touch them. And uh, once I told him I'd be bidding on it, he allowed me to handle it flip it, make sure that I was happy with the detent, was happy with uh, the build quality, which how could you not with a Rexford? I mean, it's just perfection. Check out that plunge. The grind is absolutely perfect. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus. There you go. Just perfect. I mean, look at the, the grind, you guys. It's just stunning work. Stunning. And it's got the... Um, the lock pin that travels with the blade. You can see it right there traveling along the edge. And then it disappears in the locked and the open position. So fires so hard. And if you're all about, you know, blade dropping, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Perfect. Centering. Perfect. Just I'm so stoked to have this knife. Honestly, I'm honored. Um you know, it's it's uh, in in the collecting, the Rexford collecting. It's possible to trade out a singularity and come across another one down the road, um, but with this particular piece, I don't feel like I'll have this opportunity again. So, I can honestly say this piece will probably remain in my collection uh, for as long as I love knives and, and continue to collect and, and take this uh, hobby as seriously as I do. I'm just honored to have it, and I think this is a good representation of the quality of uh, Todd's work. Obviously, you can get it with a San Mai blade or a Damascus blade, but there's something about his hand rub finish that is just stunning, absolutely stunning, as well as being able to see that maker's mark clearly on the satin. Just absolutely beautiful piece. So, 
I wanted to share this with you today. I got a lot of requests on Instagram, and I do carry this piece. I actually feel comfortable carrying it. And again, I'm just honored to uh, have it in the collection. I just wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, taking a look at the uh, open bid Todd Rexford Entropy from uh, G7 2015. If you have any questions at all, guys, please let me know. And um, I try to answer, comment, reply to every comment on the, on the channel. And throw me a like if you enjoyed this. Uh, subscribe for more videos. And again, I'd like to thank you for taking time today and uh, checking out another piece out of my collection. Beautiful. One more close-up before we wrap. Just gorgeous, fellas. Absolutely stunning. Fit and finish, truly second to none. Beautiful. And action. Oh, God. I do this all day. I think the night I got it, I flipped it probably Friday night. I had it on the, in the cove with me, and I was flipping it constantly. And it is just gorgeous. Beautiful. All right. I'm rambling. Thanks for stopping in and checking it out. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, fellas.